Right then, hiya. Welcome back to the most boring channel on YouTube. Um, I'm going to talk some more about this painting because I've moved it on since the last video. I think in the last video I said um, that I was going to put it to one side for a while and work on something else. But I think it was a video before that I said I'm full of shit. So, um, and I'm just making this up as I go along. I'm winging it, you know. I, as I've said before, I have to fit it in around other things. So, and I've not had as much, I say this every time as well, I've not had as much time to do it as I'd have liked. Um, but there's only so many hours in there. And if I'm not careful with this, I can get really obsessive about the painting. I can start, if I start doing that coming before work and after work every day thing and not taking any days off, um, it doesn't take long before I'm starting to resent doing things with my family and stuff like that because it's taking up my painting time. And that's obviously far more important than anything else. Is it fuck? It's pictures. You know, I've got to keep it in perspective. Um, so yeah, I've kind of taken my foot off the gas a little bit with it all. Just trying to, I don't know, keep my head level. You know, I'm not going mental. So, yeah, anyway, so like I said, I've moved it on a bit. Um, but I want to avoid confusion in what I'm talking about. So, I've put a layer on the sky, but it's got colour in it. And... I know that I'll keep referring to this as a tonal underpainting, even though there's colour in the sky. Um, so yeah, just don't let it confuse you. I mean, do you know the difference between tone and colour? I'm sure more, I'm sure I'm sure most people watching this do, but for the benefit of anybody that don't, um, tones just how dark or how light something is. Colours, what colour it is, you know. So you can have. You can have tone within a colour. So like light blue's a light tone, dark blue's a dark tone. Um, but the tone and the colour are independent things. Does that make sense? Probably not. <coughs> I'm sure if you Google it, you get a far better description of it than that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, if I keep referring to this tone on the painting, bear in mind the blue's colour. And I'll put the camera on it so you can see. That blue layer on the sky is it's rough as anything. Um, but it's fairly accurate in terms of placement of where I want things. Um, up here, this is that cirrus cloud that I was on about them kind of icy particles that sit miles up in the sky. So I'll do a lot of this as um, wet in wet as I put the next layer down. I'll explain that as I do it. And the rest of it is just just getting some really basic sort of cloud shapes in. And yeah, start with, you know, there's a bit of a tonal difference between the blue ear and the blue ear, just working that in. It's also a lot darker than the finished blue will be. Um, I like to do that with the skies. I like to start them a bit darker. Um, I have this half assed notion that it's a bit like looking up at the sky sky um where the further back it is the darker it is so if i'm putting lighter blues onto darker blues you, you get that reflective thing going on i don't know kind of i think it looks all right it seems to work um so yeah so that's the sky where that is at the minute and now I'm starting to move the tonal underpainting on the foreground to the next stage, which is um, adding mid-tones to it. I'll come back to that in a second, because I just wanted to say quickly, I, sorry if this is a shit show, I've no notes as usual, I'm just, you know, flying by seat in my pants. Um, I handle the sky and the foreground as separate in entities while I'm painting. Um, so, when I'm doing, like, <laughs> the crowns of these trees in a bit, I'll leave gaps where the sky's going to be. And then I'll paint the sky in, the little holes in between. And then I'll go over it again and again. But always working them independently of one another. I don't want 
I don't want the colours getting messed up. Um, then the technique's slightly different on the sky to how I work the foreground. Um, but I'll explain all that as I get to it. But yeah, like I said, I'm treating them as separate things. So I'll do another layer on this foreground, then I'll do another layer on the sky. Then I'll do another layer on the foreground, then I'll do another layer on the sky. Sometimes I might do two layers on one, two layers on another. Just depends how time's working out and, you know, what works at that particular time. Um, but I'll always do them independently of each other. So, what was I saying before I went off on that tangent? That I've started the next layer on the underpaint. Um, yeah, I'm starting to work a lot more mid-tones into it now. So I'll show you where I'm at with it. All I'm doing, all I've done so far is I'm just doing this horizon line behind the trees. So I'm not, I've not actually touched these trees that are in the foreground here. I'm just doing the ones that are behind them. You can get best idea probably if you come to this end, because I've not done this bit yet. So you see the difference as I'm coming across. The whole thing's getting darker. Because these very darkest areas that I've picked out first time around can still go darker. So some of the mid-tones are actually darker than the dark tones. If you get what I mean. On this stage of the painting, not this sort of stage of the painting. Um, yeah, because I said, I said last time, didn't I, about the opacity of the paint. So... I can mix up a light grey, but because it's, well, it's not that, I'm going to pause this because my head's gone to jelly again a second. Right, hopefully, my head's a bit clearer. I only gave myself about four seconds there, which I probably won't enough. Um, so where was I? Yeah, the opacity of the paint. Because there's not so much of that white coming through it because it's covering the white and it's quite dense um, in the areas where I want it to be dense. The highlights, I'll, like I said earlier, um, I'll leave them as raw primer wherever I can. But because the paint's not allowing the white to come through it, it's darker. I, always, I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but if I keep trying to explain it, it's just going to get worse. So I'll... Um, move on from that to showing you my setup here now this is going to be awkward because I can't see what camera's picking up and what it's not but yeah this is my sort of setup as I've got it for the tonal underpainting so I've got like palette knives obviously well not obviously I don't know some people like to mix the paint with the brushes but it fucks your brushes up there um, yeah, and while we're talking about fucking your brushes up, you'll notice, hopefully, like I said, I'm not so sure what this is picking up and what it's not, that I've got my brushes that I'm working with here. That one's just for flattening the surface off. These are ones I'm working with, really. Um, but you'll notice I've got them laid down flat on my palette. I'll either have them laid down or I might stand them up in that. What you won't ever catch me doing is sticking them in a jar like that and leaving them because that bends the tips of your brushes. You only see brushes that look like they've got a little fishing hook on the end because they've been stood like that. Just fucks your brushes up. So, yeah, if you're going to take any advice from me, look after your brushes like that. Don't use them for mixing paint because if you use them to mix your paint... I mean, it happens over time anyway, but you get paint down here in the ferrule, I think it's called. Probably balls that pronunciation up horrendously. But if the paint gets down into here and then dries, it pushes the bristles apart, seeing that the brush looks like a fan. Um, so, yeah, it's just sort of good practice and clean them every day, you know, just... I mean, I only rinse them through with turps, unless I'm going to leave them for a while, and then I'll wash them through with soapy water. Um, but, yeah. So, I think I'm going to shut up. 
because I think I've gone on long enough. Um, and I think I've probably not said half of things that I'd intended to say. Um, yeah, but who cares? <laughs>